Hi guys, welcome to my channel. I'm Maddie. I'm a reseller on eBay, Poshmark, and Mercari. And in today's video, I am sharing with you guys a haul and then we will do some shipping on a later date. So before I get into the haul, I do have some very sad news for my business. It will not affect your business most likely unless you also were shopping at the store in the DFW area. But for my business, it was some very sad news. My thrift store that offers 99 cent color tag days is no longer offering those 99 cent days. Instead, they have reduced one color tag to 75% off, which I understand in a lot of areas that's still a really great deal, but for me, going from 99 cents per piece to 75% off the ticket item, yeah, not the best. So of course, my initial reaction was, why? And I think what was really troublesome for me is I found out about this via social media. I saw that this thrift chain, they posted on social media, they were like, exciting news! Now you can get super savings up to 75% off. And to me, that was kind of condescending to try and get your customers excited for 75% off when you were originally offering 99 cent price items. So people in the comments, they were not happy. I didn't comment, I am definitely a uh, silent lurker, but also not very happy. So what that means is obviously these hauls are going to be a lot shorter because I am having to pay more money. I think that they went in this direction because this thrift chain changed their POS system. They used to individually have to manually put in every single piece. Like if it was $3.99, they'd have to type $3.99 and then whatever color tag it was. Whereas now their POS system is much better. They can just scan the tags like a regular store. So I think it has something to do with that. They're investing in that they're also opening a new location in Fort Worth so I don't know I'm trying to be positive about it I did notice when I was there that less people now seem to be there for the discount days because I think they're really deterred now and they're very turned off maybe now they're gonna go to the Goodwill bins which I personally am not a fan of so I'm trying to be positive and be like okay well less competition maybe that means I can find some greater things I don't know. It is what it is. I can't change anything. But let's go ahead and get into this haul. If you are interested in anything, everything will be posted in my Poshmark closet by the time that you see this. My average cost of goods was $3.25. The first piece that we have is a brand I don't often see. This is Sherry Hill. They are known for like prom dresses, formal gowns, pageant gowns, etc. This is in a size 2. This is a shorter dress. It'd probably be worn to like a homecoming. Really nice Barbie pink color and the back is very on trend, very cute as well with the little tie back detail. I've had really good luck with Sherry Hill in the past. Um, I sold a prom dress, it was like a two piece one that was in like the same exact color for I want to say like $200 when I first started reselling. It was one of my best thrift flips to date so I'm not sure how this will do because it is a little bit shorter. I think I started it out at $50. We'll see what happens. It's also the summertime so dresses like these probably won't be needed until like the fall. Next we have a 100% silk equipment piece. Equipment is definitely a brand I'm reluctant to pick up, but I figured with this being 100% silk and a nice black color, just button down, really minimalistic and plain. There's a button on the sleeve as well that this could do well. I just have to kind of adjust my expectations. This was the half off color, fortunately. So I think I only paid $3 for this and I'm hoping to get at least 30. This next piece was 75% off, so I think I only paid like a dollar and 75 cents for it. So I know that sounds like to go from 99 cents to a dollar and 75 cents. That doesn't sound that bad in theory. It really depends on what the original price of the item was, and then you know we'll just go from there. But this is Millie. I am pretty selective with Millie, but I thought that this was a really trendy piece. This is in a size two. It made me think of Cher from Clueless. I can use words like academia, of course I can again use clueless, there is a nice side zipper as well, it's a little like peplum flare, really cute, really fun and flirty. Again, I'll probably have to wait until the fall time for this to sell. We have a Madewell piece. I am very selective with Madewell, and I mostly get it because I think it'll sell quickly, not for a lot. This is in a size small, it's a corduroy fabric. It 
is definitely that classic boxy Madewell fit. Probably honestly could fit up to a medium. I find that Madewell runs really large, but I'm only expecting like 25 on this. This next piece I picked up due to the style and the size. This is Altered State. I believe this is a new-ish Altered State tag. I definitely don't recommend picking up all Altered State pieces just because they don't really resell for a lot. But I figured this would resell fast because this is in a size extra large. It is a trendier cut with it being like a sweetheart neckline and then it's got the polka dots on there. I was able to find a stock photo on this as well. And as far as I know, Altered State does not report you if you use their stock photos, but I thought that this could be a really cute summertime dress. You could wear it with cowboy boots if you're going to a country concert. I have sold this next dress quite a few times in a lot of different variations. This is Free People 1, and I've noticed that this sub brand of Free People does pretty well. This is in a size extra small, and this is in the copper colorway, but I'm sure you've seen this dress before. They make it in a million different colors. Again, I'm hoping that this will sell quickly, maybe like $30 to $35. Really nice summer dress. I don't have much experience with this brand. This is called Lucy in the Sky. I've sold this once before and it sold really quickly. And then I have another piece in my closet that has been sitting. But admittedly that piece is damaged, hence why it's probably sitting. This is in a size medium. Nice sequin blue mini dress. It's kind of what they're known for is formal dresses. And then the back has um, just like one strap that goes across right here and then the rest is just going to show your back so super mini i don't personally really get the hype on this brand because i feel like it is very fast fashion-esque but if you look up comps on lucy in the sky some of the pieces can sell for a lot so to each their own then I got an Aster the Label bodysuit. I'm pretty picky with this brand, but I have had really good luck with bodysuits. This is in a size extra small. And again, I was able to find the stock photo on this one. So it's got a little twist detail right here. It is pink and it has metallic hues to it. And then it also does have shoulder pads here, which I don't know if they're super trendy anymore or not, but we'll see what happens. I'm only expecting like 25 to $30. I have had hit or miss luck with this brand. This is Ramey Brooke and one side of the tag is detached so I will note that because some people are particular about this. This is in a size extra small, nice pink color. This is a very classic Ramey Brooke silhouette. They're known for making just basics that have some like nice smocking on the sleeves and on the shoulders as you can see here. So very typical style for Ramey Brooke. I've had pieces from Ramey Brooke sell really quickly. I've had pieces sit for a really long time. I've had pieces sell for $15. I've had pieces sell for $40. So it's really a toss up. This brand is sold on Revolve. I only paid about $1.50 for this piece, which is the only reason I got it. This is Torrid, which it has not been doing well for me. And then this is Torrid size zero, which is equivalent to like a medium large, which is a small size for Torrid. So we'll see how this does, but I just figured it was a nice plaid shirt, just a very typical shirt. You can't go wrong with this. Plaid does really well for me in the fall, of course. And I really like the colorway because it made me think of Slytherin with that black and that darker green. So again, like 15 to $25 on this. Then I don't typically pay much for this brand. I think I paid about $4 for this dress, which is definitely paying up, but this is Banana Republic, size extra small, and I really picked this up because of the silhouette. So this is a nice uh, slinky slip dress. It's in a camo print, which is not my personal favorite, but I know some people really like their camo. It's gonna be midi to maxi length, just depending on how tall you are. I'm five, two and a half-ish, and it would definitely be maxi on me, but this silhouette has been really popular. I haven't seen any other brand do camo like this, so I might be onto something here. Hopefully it'll sell really well. Got this next piece for about $2. This is Free People Beach, which I've noticed that Free People Beach can actually sell pretty quickly. Size extra small, just a nice ribbed black dress. You can wear it as a cover up or just like a little dress to throw on in the summertime when you don't want to think about anything. Pair it with sandals, dress it up with some wedges. I'm only expecting like 25 to 35 on this. And the last piece I have, I don't have much experience with this brand. This is Kobe. How 
Curtin, Kobe Halperton, size extra small. I know that this is a brand that is sold at higher end department stores and Revolve. It is just a white button down shirt, very wrinkly as you can see here. But I'm not sure how this will do. I'm going to check comps and go from there, but I'm hoping like $40. That is all the clothing I got. Like I said, definitely a smaller haul. I'll go ahead and show you some books I got for myself and then we'll get to shipping on a different day. So the first book I got for myself is a children's book. This is Gregor the Overlander. It's by Suzanne Collins, which is the same author of the Hunger Games series. This came out before the Hunger Games. I actually remember very vividly reading this in the fifth grade and I've always wanted to revisit the series because there are five books and I only ever read the first one for whatever reason. And I remember really liking it and when I was a school librarian one of my fifth graders was reading this series and she told me I definitely need to check it out so long overdue but when I saw it at the thrift store I was like yes I need that also if you guys are fans of the Hunger Games I saw on social media that Suzanne Collins is releasing another book that is set 40 years after the ballad of songbirds, snakes and songbirds, whatever the prequel is called, I can't remember. And I think it's gonna be about Hamish's story, so I'm excited about that one. Then we have The Last Carolina Girl. This is like a coming of age historical fiction book. It's set in 1935. This is by Megan Church. I haven't heard anything about this, but the synopsis on the back was just really interesting. Then a classic. This is The Great Gatsby by F. Scott Fitzgerald. I have read this before. I read it my senior year of high school and I really did enjoy it, but I think it'll be really interesting to read again and see if I can pick up on all the symbolism and the nuance is I've heard really good things about this next book. This is Sea of Tranquility by Emily St. Mandel. And I'm not sure if I'm gonna love this. I believe this is a sci-fi or apocalyptic. I can't remember, but I like to keep up with the popular books and see if I like them or not. That way, if anyone reads it, I can like contribute to the discussion. If you guys do follow me on Goodreads, you know I am a notoriously very tough critic. I like what I like and I don't like what I don't like, but I have my reasons. And I thought this would be an interesting biography to read. It's very thick, but this is called Showboat, The Life of Kobe Bryant. And this has really good reviews on Goodreads. This is by Roland Lazenby, and it says he also wrote a biography on Michael Jordan. Really well researched. The last book is Missing It's Dust Jacket, but this is Bridge of Clay. This is by Marcus. Zuzak. He is the same author of The Book Thief, which is a World War II historical fiction novel that is just remarkable. This is very different. I believe this is coming of age about three brothers and they're trying to discover what happened to their dad because their dad disappeared years ago. But I've been wanting to read this for a really long time, so I was excited to find this at the thrift store. Those are all of my books. Like I said, if you ever are interested in keeping up with my reading and you want to share your reading with me, you can follow me on Goodreads. It is linked down below. And then I do sell all of my books. If you ever are interested in getting any books, feel free to send me offers on them. I don't pay more than like a dollar or two for each of my books. So I'm definitely willing to pass it on and part with it. And I sell all of my books after I read them. Even if I just absolutely love them just because I have a lot of books to read and I'm just not a collector of things really. So even if it's a five star read, I'm listing it. So if you see it in my closet, it doesn't mean that I thought it was a bad book. It just means that I read it and I'm not lending it out to a friend or family member. I just am trying to pass it on to someone else to enjoy. So that is all of my haul for today. I'm going to catch back up with you guys on a later day for a shipping portion of this video. I have sales on three different platforms. These are mostly weekend sales, so let's get started with my Poshmark sales. Up first, we have a Rachel Parcel dress. This is an influencer brand. This was sold at like Nordstrom, but I think now it's more like discount stores. This is just a cute like puff sleeve dress. This was actually my dress. I thrifted this for myself probably like two years ago, and I just found that I was never really reaching for it. So this ended up selling for $18. And this did sell pretty quickly. I listed this last month and got that $18 offer. I honestly wanted a little bit more for this just because it is kind of like a more formal looking dress with the puff sleeve, but I was okay with accepting that. I don't know about you guys, but Poshmark for me has pretty much been dead. 
So this is Poshmark. We are going to use a free priority mail padded mailer. And you can see it fits in there really nicely. I wrapped it up in tissue paper. I always use white tissue paper so that it won't bleed. And there is our first sale. Next up, we have a three piece bundle on Poshmark. So I am just going to reuse this Amazon box. All three of these pieces ended up selling for $30. I got all of these pieces for 99 cents each. Unfortunately, as you guys heard earlier in the video, there's no more 99 cent day. So I don't know how much longer I'm gonna be saying that. The first item to sell in this bundle is a Jessica Simpson piece. I had been experimenting with Jessica Simpson since I was able to get it for so inexpensive. I think this color, this like royal purple is really beautiful. And this actually did end up selling pretty quickly. This is in a size eight, so a great mid-size. The next piece that sold in the bundle is perfect for this time of year. This is Tommy Hilfiger and with this like oversized plaid, just perfect. I can see someone wearing this on a cute summer date. There's a little tie there as well. This again is in a size 8, so another really great mid-size piece. Again, I got this for 99 cents, I believe, in November. And the last item to sell in this bundle is a Draper James RSVP top. I probably won't pick this up anymore because I would only pay 99 cents for this brand considering it is now a Kohl's brand, but this is a really cute pattern and i got this pretty recently as well so all of these pieces were pretty quick flips and like i said they all sold for 30 in the bundle moving on now to ebay sales of course with ebay i do need my shipping scale so the first piece that we have here is going to go media mail because it is a book i don't even know where this book came from to be honest it's definitely not one that I was reading, so maybe my husband had this for some reason. I know it's been listed for a very long time. It only ended up selling for $4, but we don't pay much for our books when we get them thrifting, so there probably was a small profit on this. Most of the books in my area range anywhere from like 50 cents to $3 at the most. So this weighs one pound and 4.4 ounces. I did just wrap it up into an eBay mailer. You can get these on the store. And like I said, this is going to go media mail. So I'm going to put it in as one pound, five ounces. And using media mail, it's gonna cost $4.87 to ship. I did only for some reason charge the buyer $3.99, which is way too low for media mail, especially when it is a heavier book. So I, like I said, won't make a big profit on this, but I'm glad to clear it out of my house. And not only can you tell that it's media mail because it says media mail, but it will always have that X right there. Moving on to a clothing piece. This is a really fast seller. This is Eileen Fisher. And this is a linen white blouse, perfect for this time of year. Everyone's looking for linen because it is such a breathable fabric. So again, just wrapping this up in white tissue paper. This sold for $21 and this is going to go USPS Brown Advantage. It's gonna be really lightweight to ship. So now that we have this wrapped up, our next step of course is to put on our poly mailer and then weigh it. So again, with the eBay poly mailer, sliding this all the way in. eBay has picked up slightly for me. It's still not great, but I think eBay has been better than Poshmark, which is kind of scary to say, but that could definitely change. This is 5.7 ounces. We're gonna round that up to six and it's going to cost $4.55 to ship. I charged the buyer $5.89, so I did make just a little bit off of their shipping. And the last eBay item that I have to ship out is this pair of black velvet booties. These are by the brand Bamboo. I don't think you can read that, it's kind of dark. But this is like a cheaper boutique brand. I got these for 99 cents and I got these a while ago. I tried to sell them to my buy sell trade store because I thought they were kind of trendy with the velvet plus a black booty. Like how can you say no? But both of the buy sell trade stores that I used to sell to, they said no thank you. And so I listed them myself. Like I said, they did take a little bit to resell and they only ended up selling for $15 but I'm always happy to move shoes because they take up a lot of space. So I'm wrapping each shoe individually. Here is one of the shoes. And then I'm going to put it into a poly mailer. I've never personally gotten any complaints about shipping shoes 
any poly mailer as long as they are packaged up nicely i don't think it's a problem so here's the other shoe and then i'm going to use a little bit of a bigger poly mailer i get these off of amazon these are pretty inexpensive and i only use them for bulkier items therefore I only have to get and order these like maybe once or twice a year. I don't really ship a lot of bulkier items via eBay and other apps. So you can see they fit in there really nicely. And we're going to close that up and of course weigh it. And then I'll look for the best shipping option. These weigh one pound, 3.9 ounces. I'm going to put it in as one point five pounds and I'm going to make sure to change the dimensions on my poly mailer so it looks like it is going to go USPS ground advantage again and it's going to cost eight dollars and 52 cents to ship I charge the buyer eight dollars and 90 cents for shipping so I fortunately priced the shipping pretty accurately and that is all of my Ebays. We do have one more platform to package and order up on and I've never talked about this platform before. So this platform is perfect if you are looking to buy or sell books because the fees are very minimal. With that said, you're not going to get a lot for your books because books really just don't resell very well, especially if it's like a bestseller or something. There's a lot on the market, a lot have been made and therefore, it's not very rare. Now, there definitely can be money in books, but they have to be like rare edition books or things like that. Maybe like a new, new release that not a lot of people have their hands on, but otherwise, it's not gonna be much that you're gonna get back on books. So like I said, I sell all of my books after I read them, if I'm not like loaning them out to someone or if I'm not just like gifting it to someone. So this is a book I read recently called Girl Interrupted by Susanna Kaysen. This is a memoir about a woman who spent some time in a psychiatric hospital in 1967 and it was okay. I didn't think it was great. It was a little too sporadic for me, but this sold for $2 on Pango Books, which is our platform that we're talking about. And the fees are, like I said, very minimal. It only took 40 cents out of it. So I made a dollar and 60 cents. So I am again going to have to use my own mailer. Therefore, I'm using an eBay mailer. And if you're just looking to buy books or sell them, this can be a really good platform. I do list my books on Poshmark, eBay, and Pango Books. And this is the first time I've sold anything on here because I just started listing there probably about like a month ago, but the label printed really nicely. I didn't even have to resize it. So it was a very easy, easy process. That is all of my sales and also what I sourced lately. So leave me a comment down below. Let me know how are your sales? How has your sourcing been? Has anything been affecting your business lately besides the economy? And if you did enjoy this video, please do make sure that you give it a thumbs up and you hit the subscribe button if you're not already subscribed.